Hi everyone, in today's video, uh, we'll be going over, you know, how to create this quick surface and then subdivide it using surface frames, which is really useful because we're able to take all of those circles and extrude them perpendicular to that frame. Then at the end, we'll have a very nice solid form that has all of those perforations that go through, um, through that slab. So if you um, have questions, I do have the script for you to take a look in the description. Uh, it does take a little bit of time for it to calculate because we have a Boolean operation here, which is Boolean difference. But if we go here to custom preview, you can take a look at what it looks like with a material. So let's go here to this one and let's go to a swatch plug that into there and this is basically what we'll be working on today so first uh, let's go ahead and bring in that component so I'll call it's called surface frames so it'll be this one generate a grid of UV frames on a surface now that we have this let's go ahead and create a surface here now we could go ahead and bring something in uh, that's fully parametric but the point of this one is to show you why this component is so important um, and Let's just go ahead and create, I'll use an interpolated curve and just create a wavy line. Now I'll take this line, I'll copy it over here and just rotate it 180 degrees using the gumball. Now I can take this and loft it just so I can kind of create, oh, so not tight, I'll do loose. And then I'll also go to shaded to see what it looks like. Now, this is good, but we should also do record history. That way, when I hit OK, we still have the ability to take this and then pull on some of these points. Um, I'm also displaying shadows, so that's probably why you're seeing it a little bit weird. OK, perfect. Uh, so let's say this is the surface we wanted to use. I'll go ahead here in Grasshopper and bring in a surface component. This one is going to be how we bring in this surface. So I'll right click, set one surface. Now that I have that, I can just take that surface and hide it so it doesn't overlap with the Rhino interface. Now I'll also go to the top right and go to high quality. So we have, so we're displaying this in a higher quality. Now we can go ahead and plug in that surface right into the surface frames. And this is the reason why I really like surface frames is because it aligns all those construction planes right along that surface and that's important because um, let's say you wanted to create some extrusions right so let's go ahead and create some circles and we'll plug plug them right into the frames and here we have basically all of those arrayed perfectly on that surface now let's go ahead and take that and extrude it And so if we took these circles and we just extruded them in the Z direction, let's say we extrude them up one, notice that they're all extruding vertically. They're not extruding perpendicular to their surface. To get that done, we have to go here to frames. Then I'll bring in a component called amplitude. Amplitude is going to be our vector. So all of our frames become our vector. So we're going to be perpendicular to each and one of these frames. And that's what goes into the vector. This vector goes here into the direction. And now notice that they extrude perpendicular to the surface. So I'll go ahead and bring in a slider of five here. Now, this is pretty cool um, and we can always increase the subdivisions in the U and in the V. So we have all of these. And so this is how you can create some pretty cool and organic forms uh, using a base surface, just kind of waving it around like this. And if you did <clears throat> want to just extrude it up and down, this is what would be the difference. So if I plug this one into here, that's just vertically up and down. And then this one here makes it kind of uh, wave around. And so what's cool about having this parametric form and also having done the record history is that we can always 
let's say we can take this one and this one and we'll just pull on this one to make it more extreme and notice that it's also doing that sort of scale same with this one so i'll exaggerate it in the vertical direction too So the frames are going to always adjust to that surface frame that we can adjust by hand here inside of Rhino. So if I do undo, it'll undo it. It's gonna take a little bit to update because we do have a lot of subdivisions, but um, that's basically how you would do it. Now, uh, let's say you wanted to use that to subtract it from the base surface. We would just bring in this base surface and we could either extrude it or offset it. The, eas the easiest way to get a solid is actually going to be to extrude it up. So I'll do that. Extrude the surface in the Z direction. So up, and we'll just say by three. So in the Z direction by three, and here we have basically that surface extruded up. Now notice that the way that they intersect with all of those solids is a bit strange because they're going perpendicular and it it almost wants to also go perpendicular. So maybe extruding it is not the best idea. Let's just go ahead and try offsetting it. And let's put the vector instead of three, Z vector. Let's just delete the Z vector here and then plug in the three into the distance. So now we have one surface and two surfaces that we need to put together into a solid because I want to subtract the pattern on top. So let's go ahead and loft together the, surf the original surface and this surface, creating, so let's disable the preview here and disable the preview here. So now what I did by lofting it together is it creates that crease in between or that ribbon in between and now we have this surface and the bottom. So let's go ahead and join all of those together with BREP join. First, the loft, and then we'll plug in those other surfaces. It doesn't really matter the order for BREP join, but I do like to flatten it because that tends to have it work uh, for the most part. So now that you have it flattened, that means that you should have, if I middle click and disable preview, you should have a solid BREP. So this component ran once, this is a closed B rep. Now I'll actually decrease the subdivisions. So I'll go to like 10 and then bring back my solids. And this is gonna be what I subtract from my original B rep. So let's go to difference. And then we'll plug in the B reps as B and then the, or I was wrong. The surface that's a solid goes to A because that's what we're keeping and what we're taking away are gonna be our cylinders. So that's gonna be B. And it's gonna take a little bit of time and actually it's not gonna work all of the time. There's gonna be in some portions where um, it actually won't and you'll see why. Because um, there's some portions in where the surface kind of is concave where um, I'll flatten this one too. That'll make it. So right now, if you don't flatten it, you have a conflict between the way that the information is organized um, in the inputs. But once you flatten it, that'll fix that issue. So let's go here to these, disable preview. And notice that <clears throat> we did have some issues here. Um, some of them did go all the way through but they don't go all the way through. So that's gonna be an issue if we want to do um, the subtraction, right? So what we have to do is actually fix that by when we extrude it, we don't just extrude it five out. So let's bring this back. We actually need to extrude the other way too. So the quick way to do that is I'll double click and go to a negative value, I'll plug in that vector into the negative, 
and then I'll add this one to the other side. So you'll see that they'll actually, if I flatten this here, they'll actually extrude in both directions. So that's giving us some issues also. Hmm. And that's gonna be because when we extrude both ways, it's gonna give us an issue. So here in the direction, I'll take away the flatten. And then I'll actually copy this down and just extrude in the negative direction. So we'll have the top, the bottom, and then we can put these together with solid union. So there's a few extra steps, so it intersects perfectly here. Um, okay, now we can disable these, and then this is what we can difference. So when we do a difference, solid difference, we'll plug in these long ones into the B and the close B rep into the A. And so I did kind of go over something I did, wasn't expecting, but hopefully you're able to see how, is, how I'm able to fix it. Now, this is gonna take long too, because we do have <clears throat> not just an extrusion up, but down, and there is a crease in the middle. Um, but we ensure that we intersect everything. So we'll go here to flatten as we did last time, just so we can have this information is a long list. This will become a long list, not just um, a bunch of grouped information. Let's see the result here. Okay, so that took a while. Um, and so I don't recommend having so many subdivisions there. But once we disable the preview here, you'll see we do have that perforated form. Um, there are other ways to kind of achieve this. Um, but this is kind of the way that I wanted to show you how you can just align things using surface frames. That's basically the, the point of this and that you can extrude them perpendicular to those frames. Now, if you do have any questions or uh, would like to see something else done with this component, uh, make sure to let me know. Um, and thank you for watching. I appreciate everyone uh, watching the videos um, and I hope to see you next time.